So you're looking to buy a house, but you're confused as to which mortgage type is gonna be best for you. Well, in this video, we're gonna cover five of the most common types of mortgages. Welcome to Bankrate. My name is Dustin. Bankrate has been a trusted resource for financial information since 1976. Now, before we jump into the list, we just got a few pieces of information that you need to figure out to make the best decision for you. The first piece is gonna be your budget. So this is gonna be your budget, not only on a monthly basis, but also in terms of the total amount that you're looking to spend. And if you haven't figured out what your budget is yet, then I highly suggest you go over and check out the Bankrate Home Buying Calculator. This is gonna give you some guidelines, some tips on how to create a budget, and also allow you to put in your own information to make a budget specifically tailored to your finances. Now, the second piece of information that we're gonna need is how much are you putting down as a down payment? Now, traditionally, 20% has been the target for a lot of home buyers. There's reasons why you want to get to 20%, but you definitely don't have to in every case. We'll talk about the pros and cons of why you want to get there later in the video. You also want to consider that you probably don't want to spend every last dollar that you have putting it down towards the house. What happens if you buy the house and your car breaks down a couple weeks after closing? You want to give yourself a little bit of buffer, a little bit of an emergency fund left over so you're not stretched too far and it becomes a financial stress. And then the third piece of information we're going to want to have is what does your credit report look like? Credit is very important in the home buying process. Have you already pulled your credit reports? Do you know what your credit score is? These are going to be important things to know on the front end so there's no surprises when you're going through the mortgage application process. We'll leave a link in the description below with an article detailing exactly how important credit is when buying a home. So let's go ahead and jump into it with number one, which is going to be conventional mortgages. Now, conventional mortgage just means that it's a mortgage that's not insured by any government agency. And there's really two types of conventional mortgages. You've got conforming and you've got non-conforming. Now, a conforming mortgage just means that it meets the maximum limits of Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. It's important to know that if you go the route of a conventional mortgage and you don't put 20% down, then you're gonna to have to pay what's known as private mortgage insurance. Basically what that means is you are insuring the lender against your default. That's right, that means that you are paying for the insurance in case you stop making payments. You pay, but the lender gets the benefit. So that's one reason why home buyers try to at least put down 20% to avoid this mortgage insurance. Now some of the benefits of using a conventional mortgage or they can be used for a primary house, a second house, or even an investment property. Generally, the overall borrowing costs tend to be a little bit lower with a conventional mortgage. And then if you don't put 20% down and you have to pay mortgage insurance, when you get to 20% equity on the home, you can ask for the mortgage insurance to be removed. So say for example, you put down 10% on the house initially, and then over a couple of years, you get up to 20% equity in the home. Well, then you can ask your lender to remove that mortgage insurance, and that's going to reduce your monthly payment. Also, if the loan is backed by Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, you can put down as little as 3% as a down payment for the mortgage. Now, there are some downsides to a conventional mortgage. The first of which is you're going to need a pretty good credit score. I'm talking about at least 620 or higher to even get approved for a conventional mortgage. Your debt to income is going to have to be less than 50% in general, and then you are gonna to have to pay mortgage insurance, as we mentioned, if you don't put down at least 20%. And then there's gonna be a lot of documentation when it comes to verifying assets, income, employment history, and your ability to meet the down payment. So conventional mortgage are generally best for borrowers that are looking to buy a home and they have good credit history, stable income and employment history, and are able to put down at least 3%, preferably 20% if possible. If you wanna see what the market looks like in terms of current rates on conventional mortgages, you can go check out the bank rate dashboard. This is gonna cover not only conventional mortgages, but all other types of mortgages that we're gonna discuss in this video. There'll be a link in the description below to get you there. The dashboard is not only a great resource to track rates, it also has a lot of other tools that'll help you throughout the home buying process. So moving on to number two. Number two is going to be a jumbo mortgage. Now jumbo mortgage, as the name implies, is gonna be a large mortgage. It's gonna be one that exceeds the federal loan limits for a conventional conforming loan. For most of the US in 2020, that's gonna be $510,400. There are some exceptions to that. In some high cost of living areas, the limit is all the way up to $765,000. $600. Buying a house over those limits likely means that you're in the market for what's known as a jumbo mortgage. The main benefits of getting a jumbo mortgage is it allows you to borrow a substantial amount of money to buy a really high-end house. The rates on jumbo mortgages are also really competitive. Now the downsides to a jumbo mortgage is you're going to have to put down at least 10, maybe even 20% to even qualify for one. 
We're also going to have to have really good credit. We're talking about at least 660 in pretty much every case. In a lot of cases, you're going to have to be over 700 in terms of your credit score. Your debt to income ratio is going to have to be less than 45%. And you're going to have to show significant assets in cash in order to even qualify. So if you have a high income, substantial assets, strong credit, and are looking to buy a high-end house in an expensive area, maybe a jumbo mortgage is the way to go. Again, you can check out the bank rate dashboard to get current rates on jumbo mortgages. So now let's move on to number three. And number three is going to be government insured mortgages. Now, just because it's government insured doesn't mean that you're actually borrowing from the government. What it means is that a government agency is making the loan feasible for all parties involved. And there's three agencies that back these mortgages. The Federal Housing Administration, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the Department of Veterans Affairs. Now, FHA loans allow home buyers to put as little as 3.5% down and qualify with a credit score of 580. Now, if you go up to 10% down, you can even qualify with a credit score as low as 500. FHA loans generally come with two mortgage insurance premiums, one that's paid up front at closing, and another that's paid during the life of the loan. And if you put down less than 10%, there's a chance that that mortgage insurance premium will never be removed. It will be on there for the life of the loan. The second government insured mortgage is gonna be a USDA loan. And these are for rural areas. These are designed for moderate to low income individuals to purchase a home in a rural area. The home has to be in a USDA eligible area and there are some income limits on these mortgages. But some USDA loans require zero down when you buy the home. And the third type of government insured loan is gonna be a VA loan. These are flexible, low interest rate mortgages that are available for US military and their families. VA loans don't require down payment and don't require mortgage insurance. They also generally cap the amount of closing costs that can be involved in the home buying process, and often that cost can be paid by the seller. The closing costs that are incurred can either be paid up front or they can be rolled into the loan itself. The benefit of using a government insured loan in general is that it can allow home buyers that wouldn't qualify for a conventional loan to get approved. Lower incomes, lower credit scores, little to no down payment, and they're open to first time and repeat home buyers. The downsides are, you may have mortgage insurance and it may carry for the life of the loan. Also, generally, the borrowing costs are going to be higher on a government insured loan. But if you don't have sufficient savings, maybe you don't have the best credit, or just generally can't qualify for a conventional loan, a government insured mortgage may allow you to actually buy the home. Between the three, VA loans generally offer the best terms when you're looking at the mortgages. So the next two types of mortgages that we're going to talk about are going to be based on the structure of the interest rate. So type number four is going to be a fixed rate mortgage. And typically when you're taking out a fixed rate mortgage, you're talking about a 15, 20, or maybe a 30 year mortgage. The good thing about a fixed rate mortgage is that you know what your principal and interest are going to be for that set amount of time. That makes it really easy to budget and plan month to month. Now the downside is the longer you stretch out the life of that loan, the more overall interest that you're going to end up paying. Due to the nature of amortization with these mortgages, which is how you pay back the loan, you're paying a lot more interest early in the life of the loan than you are later in the life of the loan. And so that can make it difficult to build up equity in the home really quickly. The interest rates are generally a little bit higher on fixed rate mortgages, and they're really best for people that are gonna be staying in the home at least seven to 10 years. And that brings us to number five, which is an adjustable rate mortgage, or what's commonly known as an ARM. As the name implies, the interest rate is going to fluctuate on these. And generally what you have is you'll have a set period of time where the interest rate is fixed. And then after say seven years, that interest rate is gonna to start to float. The great benefit of an ARM is that the interest rate on the fixed piece is gonna be lower than what you would get in a traditional fixed rate mortgage. It's not without downsides though. Once that mortgage rate begins to float and move around, interest rates could move higher and cause you to pay a lot more over time in interest. One bad spot you could get into is that if interest rates really increase significantly, that could greatly impact the amount that you're paying in a single month. Then if you need to refinance or possibly even sell the home to get out from that monthly payment, you're trying to do that at a time that interest rates are increasing and home prices are likely having downward pressure. You think about other buyers that may be looking to buy your house. If they're having to pay more in interest as interest rates are going up, they're going to be able to afford less home. That's going to cause home prices to likely fall. Adjustable rate mortgage may really be a good option if maybe you're only going to be in a property for a few years or if possibly you're just willing to accept the risk that interest rates may go up. Beyond those five, which are really some of the most common, a few other loans that you may run into, one is gonna be a construction loan, 
And so that's gonna be a loan that you're gonna take out if you're building your own house instead of buying an existing home. If you're considering building your own house, check out the link in the description for more on construction loans. You may also run into interest only mortgages. That means in the beginning part of the loan, you're only gonna be paying interest and then at a later date, it'll kick in and you'll start paying principal. That means you're gonna have a lower monthly payment initially, and then it's going to increase when you start paying principal back. So maybe if you're expecting a higher income in the future, but you wanna have lower payments right now, maybe you can look at an interest-only mortgage. And then you also may see balloon mortgages. With a balloon mortgage, you start out paying like it's gonna be a 30-year mortgage, and then at some point in the future, call it seven years, you're gonna have a big balloon payment. So you'll be making payments as if it's a 30-year mortgage, and then say seven years down the road, you have to pay back the full amount. Obviously this takes a lot of planning, a lot of foresight, a lot of preparation in order to make that balloon payment. And we'll leave a link in the description to a calculator that'll help you determine if a balloon mortgage may be right for you. I'll leave you two final resources that'll help you through the whole home buying process. The first one is gonna be the bank rate dashboard as we've mentioned several times in this video. Not only is it gonna allow you to track current interest rates, how interest rates are moving on different types of mortgages, it's also gonna give you a lot of tips, tools, and calculators that you can use that are gonna make the home buying process a lot easier and get you a much better deal. And then when you're at the point where you're ready to start getting offers on your mortgage, check out the bank rate loan match. It'll ask you a few simple questions and you'll start to get real legitimate offers, competitive offers from lenders. Okay, so that's it for this video. I wish you the best of luck in the home buying process. Hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to catch future videos. I'm Dustin for Bankrate. Look forward to seeing you again soon.